I'll have to preface this. I'm not an expert. I have no qual. I feel like I have no qualifications for the talk that I'm going to be sharing. Um, my background is an engineer, but I, I think, um, in light of for me in the past year, I think you might share this as well. There have been a lot of crazy things happening in the world. Um, a lot of foundations, uh, truth. Even like it, we're in the post-truth era. <laughs> what does that mean, right? Um, and I think uh, God was using this as beautiful encouragement. I, I don't think I'll be able to touch all the topics I mentioned in the abstract because I can't do them justice in 15 minutes, but I hope there will be some encouragement that, um, that will be for you or, and or your, um, your friends or family from this. Um, the right place? Okay, so I'm going to give a quick background about ancient languages. Um, so, and yes, I'm not a, and I'm not, I have no special knowledge about Hebrew, but I think there's some takeaways that we each um, might have. Um, there's also a word study with Hebrew for the meanings for blessing and cursing, and act, how it actually even points um, into God's love. And I think that's something that um, Satan is in the business of trying to occlude and hide from us every day. <laughs> um, there's also some principles about rest that I want to share about, um, and finally, uh, some reflections. And I think I want to just highlight, for, for our, this discussion and the ones that follow, I think, for me, it's been a lot of um, thinking about what, what, what is God's value and what does the world value say? And those tend to be in, in, d very, in very much conflict. Um, so just as a quick background, um, ancient languages they have this tendency to be read from right to left as opposed to modern day English, you're often familiar with left to right. Um, and also a lot of ancient languages, um, they tend to be um, based on pictograms and pictures. Um, and it turns out Hebrew is not an exception to that. Um, each Hebrew letter actually has a pictogram associated with it. Um, as you can see, for instance, Aleph of the first ones is associated with an ox. So we'll kind of go and use some of that in a bit, and we'll delve into it. So um, when President Barack Obama, he went to Israel, um, he, he ha had said his name meant blessing, which I think is, um, so it, actually it means to bless. It's the verb to bless. Um, blessing is baraka. Um, and so if we take the actual breakdown of um, the letters, they tell us something really beautiful. So the first two letters are bet and resh. And bet, the first letter on the far um, right, is actually, it's a tent or a house. Um, resh is actually a head. So if you combine bet and resh together, that actually means the word sun. So Hebrew is all of consonants, so uh, all, each of the letters is a consonant. So bar, like Simon bar Jonah, or bar mitzvah, the, it's like sun, right? So S-O-N. So this one, kaf, is an interesting one. Um, I remember hearing also even um, in the, um, the scriptures that the priests were asked to pour the oil in the shape of a kaf, but um, this kaf is actually like an open hand, either receiving or giving. Maybe it looks like the Lego man's hand. <laughs> um, this one's a really special uh, letter, hey, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, there, you'll see that there's this tiny little opening at the top, and it's actually associated with, um, uh, let's see, it's forward. Um, it seems to be frozen. Okay. Um, it actually is associated with air or window, um, and so um, that's what um, it, that pictogram is associated with. But there's something, I think, a little deeper than that from, um, uh, from our faith that for us. Okay, it's a little frozen. So when Abram and Sarai, um, they originally, they, they, they had been waiting for a son for many years, right? And so you'll, you'll also note that when they be, had their name changed, Abraham and Sarah, the sound is He. And He was the letter that was added to their names. And so there's this really beautiful thing with this fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, where it's associated with grace. Um, and it's actually, if you notice, like Cain doesn't have hay in his name, and Abel does. Um, there's a very consistent thing through the scriptures. It's not a, it doesn't seem like an accident. Um, so if we take that breakdown through that, it's something really beautiful. It, it, you can take it, one wonders if it means through the Son we receive or he gives us grace. 
And it was just something really beautiful and encouraging. Um, and it's not, it doesn't end that. It turns out the Hebrew word for curse also tells about his love for us. Um, so this is Kalala. Um, we'll kind of do the breakdown again. Um, so the first letter, Kaf, is actually even someone like kind of turned the back of their head. You kind of just see the back of their head. Um, and the next one is Lamet. Lamet um, is an interesting one. It's, um, it, it's, it's associated with learning. I think there's a Hebrew word, Lamed, which actually means to learn. Um, and um, there's a, also, I think, uh, it's more used as a British term, goad, to goad someone. So if you remember when um, Saul, before he came Paul, he had things said to him. One was, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And the other one was, Saul, Saul, why do you kick against the goads, right? And that was, we believe the voice was from Jesus saying that to him. And something, um, that picture of a goad is actually what um, a shepherd would use, kind of similar to a shepherd's crook, and like to his livestock and just say, don't go over there, there's going to be lions and bears that are going to eat you over there. Stay here in my pastures, like a gentle correction that's associated with. So that's that actually that shape of that letter um, it's, it's more, it looks better in the other font, but um, it, it's associated with learning. And there's two of them, and I'll come back to that in a bit. Okay, so again we see hey, right? So that, that, that there's an interesting part, it's, it's also in the word for curse. So if we remember, um, I'll take the point that curse is any form of down talking. And Jesus illustrates that um, as he goes through when he recalls the, um, he's talking about the, uh, uh, he sees the fig tree, and he sees that it does not have any fruit. And so he, he says, may you never have any fruit um, again. But if you remember also Peter, he later on says, um, whoa, the, the, the tree you cursed is withered, right? So that's any form of down talking is a curse. And it also it comes through and like, how, why do you think you deserve this? Why do you think you uh, deserve any forgiveness? Why do you think you're worth anything? Like, all those things are forms of down-talking. Any voices like that? And those are forms of curses. Those are curses. And what this word actually says, sorry, it's a little stuck, or maybe I'm not pressing it right. <laughs> sorry. There's actually only one curse, thanks, Stephen. Only one curse that's not, ir ir not reconcilable with his, his salvation plan for us. And that is when someone continues to turn their head away from learning um, his grace for us. So I, I thought that was just like so beautiful when I heard that. It's like, um, and you know, the, about the doubling part, um, I, I showed this because, you know, even I think plants also notice, like you'll see general plants, they will kind of try to face the sun as they grow because they know they'll be blessed and <laughs> grow from that. I think it illustrates that too. Um, something about the doubling, I remember hearing uh, this one, one scripture I was reading one morning, and it was, it was where Joseph is interpreting Pharaoh's dream, and he says the doubling means that God has fixed it, and he will, it will come to pass. And so something really beautiful about that, um, it, it kind of helped me to better understand this verse where I, I, it, it was like a knot for me. I was like, why, why, did God, why did the Lord harden Pharaoh's heart, right? And so what, what, is, what is that all about, right? Like, why is he making it worse? But actually coming about, I think some of the other beautiful talks in the justice session remind me also, it's, it's about, um, you know, we know intrinsic things as, you know, when someone forces their will on someone else, like rape, for instance, something so, so ugly as that, we know intrinsically it's, it's, it's wrong, right? And so the Lord we know is the Lord of love, and he never forces himself on anyone. So when he saw Pharaoh, he respected Pharaoh for his decision, and he said, I respect your decision, and he said, I'm going to help you, I'm going to harden your heart. And so it's actually out of love, I think, that's why I, I was just like, thank you, Lord, for revealing that, because that was really encouraging, even in that. So he never forces his will or way on anyone. And, and so also, you know, that his timing is, is um, it, 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 he, he does not, he, he has this patience out of his love for us, he doesn't want any of us to, you know, perish. He does, but he also does not want to force in any of us. And so I thought, you know, coming back to the world's value and God's value, it was just like God has all these, like, 
And Christ also illustrates how many ways that, you know, he, it's opposed to what the world's value is. Like, you know, it's not your monetary value. It's not how the quantities. It's not about that. He, he, he says, even with, so the English word loser is a very American term because I think British before they said the unfortunates because they recognized it was like not a matter of their own earning. But I think loser and winner implies that you can earn your way which I think is opposed to where he comes with grace when he's saying, explaining with his blessing. He says, we do not need to earn our way to get his blessing. He says, just receive. So um, I thought that was really beautiful and encouraging for, you, for me, and I hope it was for you. And this part about rest. Um, so um, I think there's something about the, uh, the process of cancer and how it forms that can tell us about the nature of rest. Um, so there are very specific hallmarks and, and things that identify it. One of which is this thing, so each cell has a nuclei, which is kind of like the brain of that cell. Well, something that pathologists use to identify cancerous cells when they run that stain is that they're multinucleated, or which means they have multi, multiple nuclei. Um, and so there's, some, there's this very, very, like, um, uh, known progression pathway where it, it continues and you see um, with the dysplasia part where the nuclei get larger and they like kind of go crazy and I think when it goes into full bone cancer you'll see God is a God of order and so cancer kind of shows all the boundaries are broken the order is destruct in form of destruction also there's the path of like even the vessels that are just like there's no time to air check any of the DNA it's just going crazy in terms of trying to trying to consume and multiply as quickly as possible without regard for boundaries. And, and also, um, blood vessels are like leaky everywhere because there's this, like, this rush of trying to like, multiply. And I think that also illustrates, um, this is just to show, like there's, on the left it's a, a bone cancer and you see in, this, in the round, uh, you'll see in the normal it has all these empty spots and then for the cancer it has all these parts that are filled with multiple nuclei. And I think it actually illustrates of the state of being of many minds um, and I think that also illustrates of not being in rest. Um, and there's something, there's a study, it's a very secular study, I think <laughs> one of them in the audience I might have even worked on it. Um, but it, it, um, this Dan, Gilbert, Dan Gilbert's lab, and it was interesting, they, they tracked people on their mo mobile devices and tried to find you know, trends of like, happiness. And the one most strongly statistical uh, uh, trend that they found was when um, people's minds wandered, um, that was when they were unhappy. And so that was like this, pa this paper in science. <laughs> so um, I thought that also kind of, you know, where he knew that we need that anchor. And he says that when we stay our mind on him, he will, he will, he, he will keep us because, we, you know. And, and, and to that point, even where that beautiful hymn, Seth Bafford, he writes that is well, to that point where he can write is well with my soul, even after he heard that his daughters had died in the storm. And so God knows like what we need in the storm is to anchor ourselves in him. And I think that's, um, that's something that I thought um, was also encouraging for me. Um, so I just wanted to like highlight a couple things about value. So I think some others have highlighted about you know women versus men and why you know some might be valued more than others. So this passage um, with where Eve was supposed to be created from Adam's rib, I've heard, and I think there's been a whole book about it written from a more secular context about how that word rib actually is side. It's um, side, and so I thought that was really beautiful in terms of turning around. It's, it's not so much like one subjugated to the other. It's to work side by side facing God versus saying one is lower or smaller or um, diminutive to the other. And I think um, the other part that it goes with is that beautiful arc to, um, uh, oh, wrong, okay, where Christ, when he's on the cross, and that part where there's a soldier that goes and pierces his side and out comes that blood in the water. And the, the really beautiful arc is the fact that it's that side, right, because he replaced the first Adam. And that it's, it's not about making one lower than the other. It's about to the point of love that he is willing to sacrifice himself for his bride, the church. And so I was like, 
the <laughs> I thought that was just amazing. Um, um, I think uh, Alex did a beautiful job. So even when Victor Frankl, <laughs> um, he was, you know, something that I've, I remember him mentioning was the German soldiers when he was in Auschwitz and Dachau, they were saying, you are pigs. And he himself, he had this quote and he said, I'm actually a sheep. And so I thought that was really amazing that he had that realization. Also, it wasn't so much like the value, it's, it's, it's not that external assigned value of each of us. And I think um, to expand on it, I think it comes to where, um, you know, coming from grace and blessing and that we are his beloved, right? He substituted for us to make us his beloved. And finally, I think it has to end with coming back full arc to you know, John 1, 1, where in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is, was, is God, right? And so the, the key part that it brings back to me for is the Word in Greek is logos, which is the basis of logic and reason, and he invites us in. Like, even if you're struggling with this today, I invite you to continue to engage and not, like, give up on your, like, say, don't go with the current, which says your, your worldly value is, is, is low and <laughs> nothing. That's not, I, 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 I plead with you what God does. He invites you to bring in with, he says, he gives you logic so you can also reason and talk with him. So thank you for your time. We Mass Media, Media Empowering Community.